Welcome to Envision Prototypes. I'm Vic. I'd like to talk to you today about the way we've been able to adapt this trunk lid, which came from an earlier model Ford, to the 51. You can see Nick has fitted the trunk quite well. He's cut off the bottom section, shortening it up. It's come time now that we have to mount some hinges in it. Now, you might be able to see at the angle, there were hinges on this trunk and they were on the surface. Back in 49, they had the surface mount hinges on the trunk. It wouldn't look that good if we did that again. So we decided to go with the hinges inside. Now, being that this 51 has been morphed onto the Infinity, the rear deck on the Infinity is far shorter than the original, than the original uh, 51. Now, just to show you, this is the assembly that, that they had to open that trunk lid. And this was the rear deck up to here. You can see this conglomeration underneath. They have a, a, a compression spring that pushed the trunk open. So they needed space for that and bracing for it because quite a bit of tension on it. So that's why all this ugly framework. You didn't see it underneath. Now to copy that, because we only have one, to copy and make another one on the other side, that's a lot of work and we don't have the space. So we had to look in our stock to see how we could substitute this with something a little bit better. So we came up with this particular hinge. We had to modify it because the height on this one was about two inches higher. We had to cut it down, drop, drop this level down. But you see, the, the whole arrangement is the same. It's identical to what was here. You got that curvature, you got the pin, and you got the two holes at the top. So that is working out quite well. So now we have to replace this conglomeration. And what we did, we took some box tubing and we made up channels to mimic what was underneath there, except no spring, just a, a pivot pin. And there it is there. That's your pivot. And it'll work in there like that. That will go underneath the rear deck. And as you can see, the, the mounting surface is basically the same, except that we lowered it. And it makes for a quite a neat looking hinge. It will function identically. And to replace that ugly spring assembly, we're going to go to the gas cylinders that are so popular nowadays. They take up far less room and they function a lot better. We'll cut openings so that we can slide these in. They will be welded to the rear deck on the underside. The pin will be welded to the outside so that the pin won't move. Just the bushing will move on that pin. Okay, now that we've got the trunk lid removed, I don't know if you can see that, but we've notched out the rear deck enough that we can slip the side cheeks in past that. It gives us room in that slot for this arc to move back into. So if you can visualize that, I got two left hands today. Okay, that's the way it's going to go, and it's going to slide in as such, just like that. It'll be clamped in nice and tight, lined up, welded in, and this is simply pin, pinned in the, in, inside like that. So we've got both sides all ready. They're both notched. Now, being that the deck is kind of curved, we had to make one side of the channel a touch longer than the other side. So the inside legs are a little bit shorter, outside a little bit longer, so that they sit nice and flat. You don't want them on an angle. 
Any hinge operation has to be in line with the opposite hinge. If they're on an angle, they will bind. Okay, as you can see, uh, we've gone ahead and we've installed those hinges that I was just showing you. They're painted, they're finished, they're, they're just tacked into place right now, both sides. We took care to align the pivot with the center line of the car and also to make sure that they're both perfectly flat so that the center of the pivots line up so they don't bind when you open the trunk. Now we're ready to install the lid, the trunk lid, and as you can see we've prepped the trunk lid from the inside. We put some masking tape roughly where those hinges are going to go so that we can lay out where those centers of those holes are and prep it for uh, cutting the back open and sliding in a backer plate that is threaded already it'll be tacked into place and uh, that'll be oh and you maybe notice the back edge is all completed nice fresh metal all welded in it was primered on the inside and now we're ready to install the trunk lid all set all set okay, I'll grab it. There. Corrected this curvature a little bit, but I still it's a little bit high there. Yeah, the, once it's all attached, yeah, line, then that, that'll work in perfectly. Lining it all up nice, making sure all the edges are perfectly spaced. Okay, it's going to come ahead a little tiny bit here. Uh, that's better. A uh, touch more right there. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Okay, might have to go that way a little bit. Hey, how'd you get? Let me out. How'd you get in there? Fit one and a half of me in there. These are the two plates I was talking about. They're a quarter inch thick. So once it's slid in, lined up with the two holes that are going to be drilled, the bolts will be put in, and then this will be welded right to the trunk skin on both ends so that it doesn't move around. So these are ready, they've got to be painted. Well, we're taking a break from the back hinges of the trunk and we're going to start on the hinges for the front hood. We have to establish a solid mounting place on the structural part of the body in such a way that the line of the hinge is perpendicular to the pivot. If it's any other angle, when you lift the hood, the hinges will bind. So we took off the shelf a set of hinges here that basically will give us the up and out that we need. We can't just pivot. The, the new hinges that are coming out on the new cars just have one pivot pin and they just pivot right there. In this case, we need to be able to not only open up but move out to clear our front firewall section here. So this is the hinge that we're going to use. This part mounts on the underside of the hood. It has uh, a pivot for a, a cylinder. It's a, a twin arm action. You can see the two arms here, two different lengths. And what it does, as you can see here, as it goes up, it moves ahead. So that way the tail end of the hood will come out and it'll clear the edge of that firewall. So the thing is to establish exactly where to mount it on the hood. If we mount it on the hood, put it in here, nobody can get inside to mark it. If we, if we mount it on here, mount the hood on, we still can't get inside to mark the, the spot. So we have to kind of Mickey Mouse a way around that. So first of all, we've already installed 
one eighth wall structural metal in here and this piece is in perfect center line alignment of the car perpendicular to the pivot. Having established that surface, it gives us a range where we can move up, forward, back, down with the mounting surface of the hinge here. First of all, we have to establish where the, the skin of the hood is going to be. Now I need a straight edge, something like that. And what we're going to do is drop it across from the front to the fender. So that basically is going to be the surface of your hood. Having put that in, now we can line the hinge up in such a way that we can get a look at where it's going to sit. That doesn't look too bad there. So what we're going to need is a, a three-quarter inch spacer to mount the the bolts and the mounting bolts inside the hood. So we need that three quarter inch space. So what we're going to do is we're going to clip a piece of three quarter plywood onto the hinge along with an extension like so that will extend our hood surface to the body of the car. Now as you can see we're, we're lining up not too bad there. We're clearing, the hood surface is even and we're coming in relatively close to the surface of the hood here. At this stage we can mark We can take that extra material off of there. Double check it, like so. It doesn't look too bad. Now, we're going to mount that just with a screw for the time being. Now, we're going to test it and see how close we got. My gosh, we're not looking that bad. It looks with a slight adjustment, like so. That's pretty well bang on right there. Now that we have it established, that's where it's going to be. Uh, well, I should have tried that, shouldn't I? See? Let's see how it works when we open. That's flush there now. It's flush with the, with the surface of the hood there, with the fender. Up it comes. And we've got adequate clearance, tail edge of that hood, all the way up. So, that happened to work out quite nice. So now we can scribe where the holes, actual holes are going to go. We'll drill them. We'll probably put weld nuts on the back. The fender will come off and weld nuts on the back and that hinge is done. Now, the next step is to locate where this is on the hood. Now what I've done is I've actually taken a piece of cardboard and I've cut it out in such a way, oops, pardon me, it's upside down, there we go, that's better, in such a way that I'm following the edge of the fender and is the... Is that my goat meal box? That was my template. You just cut up my template. Hey, this is more important. It's actually pivotal to get it perfectly right. Now that we have this edge and this edge as the template, we can raise that hinge up until it engages, touches this undersurface, and we can scribe 
the holes and the outline of the hinge on the underside of this. And what we'll do with this is locate it on the edge of the hood and that'll give us the location where to put the mounting bracket on the hood itself. As you can see, that's the outline of the hinge, that's the two holes. Hopefully that works out. In case like this, we don't have blueprints to work from. We have to improvise. Sometimes the improvisions don't work. In this case, this hinge went in without any problem. It came out really nice. But a lot of the times you, you spend hours and hours and hours playing back and forth. If one thing doesn't work right, or if one thing works right, another thing doesn't. So you go back to correct that thing and then you throw the other one off. So it's a back and forth game. I notice how well this clears the rubber mounts here on the hood. It just, just works out nice. Okay. We have, as you can see, mounted the hinges to those plates that I was talking about. But we mounted them with just regular self-drilling, self-tapping screws temporarily until everything is finalized. Now we're going to check and see how this hood is going to close. Now, if you just check the alignment at the back corners okay. as I'm coming down, make sure we have the clearance between the firewall and the end of the hood. How are the sides? So far, so a little bit tight on this side here. Okay, how much clearance do we have? Eighth of an inch. We need a little bit okay. more. Can we go down further? Oh yeah, you can come down. You're inside already. Okay, this side lined up pretty good. Uh, well, that's almost perfect there. Look at that. Wow, so it's got to come ahead a little teeny bit. It's got to go towards the right a bit, towards oh. the passenger side. Okay, we, so... We can make that adjustment. Let's take a look on the other side. The hood is almost perfect here. The center is a touch high. Yeah, we're a little bit high. And it's a little high here. When that comes down, this will come down. We still need to put the actual fasteners in, 5 16 bolts. But, but overall, the function. Look at that. We've got clearance. So now the next step is going to be, once everything is finalized, then the, the holes in the hinge brackets themselves, they're quite large, so that allows for movement back and forth, up and down. They will be marked onto the side brackets, the permanent brackets. They'll be drilled and will mount nuts on the back. So that will be a, a permanent um, fastener then on both sides. So then, we'll, instead of using the self-drilling, self-topping screws, then we'll actually use the proper mounting bolts. As you can see, just like the ones in the upper part of the bracket here, those are final. Now, this hood has been repaired. There was quite a bit of damage to the top of it. Somebody walked on it, caved it all in. This was all stove in. So as you can see, it's been brought out, it's been smoothed right out, and it's just like new now. Oh yeah, we have to install that structure in the underside yet. That, that will control this angle at the front. That structure comes back in about that far and supports this whole front. And it provides mounting for our aligning pins and hooks to catch the hood. So that's coming up next. Now we've got the back finalized, it's anchored, that's pretty well permanent. Now we can work on lining everything up at the front. Okay, now comes the moment of truth. So here it goes. I don't hear any squealing. It looks pretty good. A little tiny bit of adjustment on that side, a little bit up. But other than that, it looks very nice. I think that was a successful job. Look at that. Perfect. This is a bit high yet. You know, we have 
uh, slight adjustments that have to be done, but it's sitting quite nice. Okay, thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.